Um, college students is a little bit special. Uh, they live in highly densely populated living circumstances. They go to class with hundreds of students. They tend to socialize with a lot of different people. So we've been asking students if they get the flu to self-isolate in their rooms and not go to classes, not go out to parties, and to ask their roommate to sleep somewhere else for a few days because that's a way of preventing the virus from spreading throughout the dormitory, the fraternity, or the apartment. Another feature is drinking glasses. These are social beings. They go out to a lot of parties. There tends to be sharing of drinks. And uh, we're really strongly advising students to get their little drink cup and don't share it with anyone and don't drink out of anyone else's cup and don't participate in any drinking games that involve sharing drinking cups as well. The best way for college students to avoid getting the flu or transmitting it are one, get vaccinated. Two, self-isolate if you're sick, don't go out. Three, wash your hands, meticulous cough etiquette, cover your mouth when you cough. And finally, it's really important not to share drinking glasses. Students are social beings. They tend to share drinking glasses. That's a big no-no for a lot of different reasons, but particularly for not transmitting the flu. There's, there's um, a number of reasons for students to consider getting vaccinated. First, if they have a chronic condition, such as asthma or diabetes, they're at much greater risk of having a complication. Um, second is students need to remember that they can pass the virus on to people they care about. Uh, they can pass it on to their family members, to their friends, uh, to their elderly and frail relatives, to their tiny young nieces and nephews, to their pregnant sister-in-law. And uh, that, that is something that I think students forget, is that for the otherwise healthy student, the most compelling reason to get the vaccine is not to necessarily protect yourself, but to protect your community and your loved ones. What's unique about H1N1 is that it seems to be impacting younger populations. Uh, higher rates of hospitalization are among people up to the age of 24 higher rates of death among pregnant women. And so this is what's really unique uh, about H1N1. The high risk groups for H1N1 are those people that don't have antibodies against it, and that tends to be younger people, infants and toddlers, pregnant women, and all individuals up to the age of 24. They have the highest rates of hospitalization and the highest risk of complications. There's been a small percentage that have been hospitalized. Thankfully, uh, very rare deaths, but those deaths are tragic reminders that there are very serious consequences to this disease. Uh, first of all, the safety testing has all gone marvelously. There have been no signals of any problems. Honestly, I never expected any. This vaccine is produced identically to every other seasonal flu vaccine we've ever received here in the last 40 or 50 years, and I don't anticipate any problems at all. I mean, the way I see it for $20, if I can avoid being sick at all, whether or not it's with the swine flu is worth it, you know, and uh, as far as I can tell, it's a fairly low risk vaccination, so it seems worth the trip in the rain. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, like I'm in a couple lab classes and everyone's just touching everything and everyone's all over the place, so it's pretty hard to avoid getting other people's germs when you're in college. It does sort of take away some of the anxiety, you can just sort of go about uh, your life not worrying about, you know, you know, spreading germs so much, catching germs. I don't know. I have some friends that actually got the swine flu, so I might as well prevent it before it happens.